Hi, I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, and welcome to Charged Up. I'm Mark Chasley, joining Nikki, and this week we have been living with the Smart for Two ED. So, Mark, Smart for Two electric drive. Uh, 35 kilowatts of continuous, continuous. motor power, yep. um, 55 con uh, peak. 55 peak, so you've got that little bit of extra power for the acceleration when you need it. 62 is about 11.6 seconds. So very much a city car kind yeah, of range. Yeah, yeah. Uh um, but uh, enough talking, let's drive. Let's drive. So. Key is down here, as with all the smarts, I believe. Yeah, now I've got to say, that's that's been bugging me this week. Yeah. Uh, it's a problem that I've had with other smart cars in the past. Uh, for those who don't know, I've got two dogs, and um, uh, my Labrador loves to, to ride in the car. She has a doggy seatbelt, and uh, she's been sitting up here in, in where I am now uh, this week, and we've gone round corners, ah. and she's lost her footing, and she's just pushed over and knocked Slipped the car down. off. It is in a very... Uh, trustworthy position you'd have to trust the person next to yes. you not to just quickly turn it off but but anyway let's go um it's got a manual handbrake not one of those electric ones mm -hmm. and then it's got a gear shift which has got park reverse neutral and drive so there's no extra driving modes but we'll come on to that with the regen in a minute so i can just pull straight out of here now how did you find how do you find the ergonomics because smart cars for me i find smart cars are quite restricted in their ergonomics they don't have a huge amounts of, of adjustability. I mean, the seat goes forwards and backwards, doesn't go up and down. It just goes forwards and backwards, and obviously you've got the, the Big rake head. at the back. Yeah, you can adjust the the rake of the of the seat. Uh, but other than that, I think we're, we're kind of screwed for adjustment, really, aren't we? It is, and it, it feels to me, I, and maybe this is just me, and maybe I'm an odd shaped person, but I feel as though. Some things are really close to me, mm -hmm. like the steering wheel feels unnaturally close to me at the moment. Mm -hmm. But the air conditioning units, the dials for how much power I'm using the speedo feel mm -hmm. unnaturally far away from me. Um, so it's a really weird mixture. I, I imagine it's something you would eventually get used to, as long as I didn't have to change the infotainment system. It's okay. I mean, it's you know, it's one one click access to all of your things. You've got uh, auxiliary uh, sort of line in 3.5 mil line in, which is hidden in the glove box. Ah. Here you've got SD card, which is behind the uh, the actual unit itself. Play CDs, DVDs, uh, and then you've got the USB connectivity as well, and you've got Bluetooth. Uh, in terms of streaming, I found it was it's been very good this week. Um, the quality of the audio has been Thanks. much better than I've had in, in past smart cars actually. Excellent. When I said there are no selectable driving modes, it's a slight lie. There's a selectable driving mode on the regen. At the moment, I'm in standard D. So when I come off the accelerator, just make sure no one's around me. It's kind of a bit like the leaf maybe it's like the leaf in eco actually it feels like there's what well, how about how about we say say how fast you're going so you're doing 30 now come doing off the 30 speedo now. come off the speedo and we're dropping from we've just gone past 30 that's 25 that's 20. 20 so we're at 30 again and i'm in d plus now which is controlled by flappy paddles so this is the aggressive region so if i come off the accelerator now and there's a slight downhill we're going down so we have to bear that in mind but at 30 we're now 25, 20, 20, 15. So we're almost coming to a standstill. I'm gonna move off because there's a car behind me. And then the final mode, if you flappy paddle down twice, I love saying flappy paddle, <laughs> is um, the D minus, which is no regen. So if I come off at 30 again, which I am now, we're just coasting. So we're essentially still at 30. It hasn't really changed. No, we're too coming just hitting 25 now so it's a much smoother drive and it allows you to really control how you're driving without touching the brake you can really fine-tune your regen and while everyone knows that, that coasting is the most efficient way or maybe you don't know coasting is the most efficient preservation of energy regen really is where you get more energy because you use it more often it's not very often you can coast up to a red light now i find um i actually use i use the regen to control the braking so i don't actually use the brake pedal 
really more than just to stop the car, which is great because it gives me this, as you say, this this really um, refined braking system. Yeah. And I think we're going to see all these German cars coming out with it now. I mean, I know that Volkswagen's doing it. I know that uh, obviously Mercedes is doing it. Uh, I know that some other car companies are thinking about it too. I do have to say, and, and driving this car again now, the brake pedal really bugs me. It moves in an unnatural way. It kind of you flips see, forward like and it. down. Okay, interesting. I, I quite like it. It does. It's not just a sensible press. It's kind of you have to hook up and down. It seems to me. So I don't like it for that. But that's maybe that's my personal opinion. Found when you have been driving, have you ha found things like handling? And I feel very high up on the road, for, for in, in such a small car as well, and I'm guessing that's the battery pack having elevated me up, but I don't know if that's a standard thing in smart cars. So there's a lot of visibility, which is nice. The handling feels fine for me around town. Once I get above about 50, it starts to feel shaky is the wrong word, maybe uneven or, or unsure. Buffeted. Buffeted, that's a good word. That's, a, that's how it feels for me. It feels like, but then that's true of any smart car, and I know you've never driven a petrol smart car before. No. So your, your basis of this is kind of first time in a smart car as opposed to this is a new smart car, this is a new type of, 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 uh, uh, of driving experience from within the smart brand. Um, I think, honestly though, you could give this car to any smart for two driver and they would feel, um, they would feel at home. Um, and that's something I've noticed this week. The smart car really doesn't do bumps very well. I, yeah, I agree. But the twists and turns, I imagine that would be the nice way to drive it. I wouldn't want to drive this car down a motorway at 70, 75, or going with traffic um, for a long periods of time. That, that, I feel it would get quite uncomfortable quite quickly. I do like, I have to say, I do like the green trim and the, the green which carries onto the outside. Um, but on the inside, everything's got this green trim to it and it looks really nice. And it, it's kind of a, while it's quite a, a aggressive color, it's it feels slightly understated on the inside. So it's just it's just there to highlight the different features, which I really like. The, the speedometer, not the speedometer, sorry, the power meter and the state of charge meter, which is an analog state of charge meter. So a lot better than things like the Leaf, which only gives you a one in 12 resolution of, of how much state of charge you've got. One of the things I like about this car is this, is the sun visor. Oh, the, I, I thought you were going to say the roof in general, but you actually specifically like the sun visor. I like the fact that you can you can decide whether you have this light, open, airy interior, whether you have this warm, cosy feel. Because in the summertime, when it's lovely, or on a cold winter's day maybe, if it's nice and bright, I want to have the sun in. But if it's a cold, wet, miserable day, I want to be warm and safe inside. You want to cocoon yourself I in. I want to cocoon myself. Pulling um, away from the lights just reminded me how much I love the hum of this car. Oh yeah, let's talk about the noisemaker. The so noisemaker, so uh, the Leaf has its very high-pitched squeal it puts out in front, so so high-pitched that some people uh, can't hear it. I would. Uh, we, there are a lot of reports of people thinking theirs doesn't work, and it's very high-pitched, whereas this is a more of a hum, like a Jetsons futuristic mm -hmm. car mm -hmm. hum to it, and I love it, and I think it's really nice. With, with the... Uh, with the noise, it's very similar. It reminds me um, of the noise in the Zoe, the Renault Zoe. Um, so I, I do wonder if they're, they've got the same noise generation uh, equipment. equipment in it. Um, it does make people take second uh, second takes. I actually scared someone the other day. I pulled up at a uh, it was a parking lot, and the guy that was you know next to me nearly had a fit <laughs> because. He, he he got in the car, he got you know, he was getting in his car and and um I pull out with this space sound. And he said it really does sound like a spaceship. I just accelerated from naught up to sort of thirty there and it was absolutely fine. Um the feedback in this car is is it's mixed. I've had this problem in the past. Sometimes okay. I, I think, yeah, there's quite some good feedback, and other times I think the car's quite vague. 
Um, there's, Interesting. There's certainly a lot of, of vibration through the through the wheels from from the road, yeah. um, and there's no power assisted steering on this. You were talking earlier about paddle regen. My foot's off the off the gas pedal, and I'm I'm coasting down this hill, um, and I just sort of add a little bit as we go along just to help it go down the hill. Yeah. And then I use the pedals, the, the paddles, sorry, to slow the car down completely. So, you know, if I, if I, um, coming up to a red light, coming up to a red light here, if I engage this. This is all just done with the flappy paddles. And now moment. I'm pressing the brake pedal. Just to You could feel up. that kick in. Yeah. It's quite a rough transition still. Between two. But it might be because we're not used to this car. This car you can pay extra. I think it's about for, for a 22 kilowatt, which is a three phase right. 32 amp charger. And it, we should point out that, that most people won't have access to three phase in their house. So no. um, someone was saying recently, I can't remember who it was, they were having this argument with someone about why they couldn't have a rapid charger in their home. For their Nissan Leaf, and for the same reason, you can't have a, you know, I can't have a 22 kilowatt quick charge point in your home for a Smart for 2 ED unless you happen to be extremely wealthy or extremely lucky. Yes, uh, and there is a small percentage of UK homes who, that do have they it. Do have three phase. It's quite common in Europe. Yeah. So we should point that. Okay, so 22 kilowatt uh, onboard battery charger. It's made by Brusa. Yeah. Uh, it's very very good, um, and it will charge this car's battery pack from empty to full in about an hour. Yeah, or, or 45 from empty minutes to, to, to an 80%, hour. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, like every battery pack, the, the last sort of 10% or so, so takes a bit longer to do. Um, but it, it, that, that lends this quite versatile. It, it makes the car quite versatile. When you're stopping at motorway service stations yeah. now, um, you could use the big rapid, um, what I would call in my head the Zoe connector, but it's not really a Zoe connector, but it's the 44 kilowatt, but it would only take 22. I'm not sure if it would work with that, with oh, that really? one, but it would certainly work with, uh, with the standalone posts. The type two standalone 22 kilowatt three phase units. Um, but you could be pretty sure you could plug this into any charging, public charging station and get a charge with that yes. thing. And you'd probably get the maximum it could give you bar the big boxes mm -hmm. which is now we nice. should we should we should note at this point that if you're in america yeah you only have 16 amp charging you only have 3.3 kilowatt charging available to you uh if you were to buy this car because they have the j1772 connector on america you get the the 3.3 the kilowatt there's no dc fast charge for this car um it, it doesn't use a combo plug um in europe it's got the uh, Menek has type, type two, two yeah. uh, which is why you can have three phase. This car doesn't, it only has the, the single phase charging. So far we've we've kind of sung some praises about this car, but we've also we've also been quite negative about it. Yeah. Now um, if I if I got in this car and I got to drive it um, without knowing anything about the price uh, just knowing the specifications, I'd be quite impressed. Yeah. Now, this car itself um, is how a smart car should have been from the word go. Many people don't realise this, but the smart car was originally designed as a hybrid. A hybrid, uh, okay, I take it. Um, but uh, this vehicle, obviously, it has an electric version. It's very close to the original smart car route. It's actually bigger, substantially bigger than the original smart car, the first generation smart car. It's substantially bigger than the second generation yeah. smart car. It's a little bit bigger than the third generation smart We're car. We're talking fractionally bigger though. I mean, you could park the two of them. I had, did it the other day just for just for kicks. I parked this up next to a uh, 2007 smart okay. car. And there was just a tiny little bit of difference, but not much, not much. But interestingly, I think all of these conversations have to be buffeted in how much the car costs. Yeah, how much the car does cost. Which I believe is 17,000 for the base model. Yeah, about that. About that. We can, maybe we can flash up. We the... can, we can, it's, it's about 17 grand for the base model. That's with the battery pack included. Yes. 
so that you can also buy it i think for about 13 14 and then rent, rent the battery, the battery. Um, rental prices is similar to, to to renault's rental prices and and um uh, and similar to the rental prices that nissan does yeah. but but this is the big problem this is a two seat city car yeah it's very compact it, it would be great somewhere like new york london tokyo yeah where you need a two-person car just to get you to and from work it's certainly fun yeah um is it as fun as the twizzy it's certainly warmer than the twizzy let's put it yeah. like that i think <laughs> the twizzy probably is more fun to drive around town because if you if, especially if you like the attention if you want to just you know put on your music your radio show you know, yeah. have your coffee in the coffee hole. I mean, this one's got optional extras of coffee holders or cu cup, cup holders. holders yeah. Um, which is the other thing, you know, this car has an extensive uh, options list, but actually base model trim is pretty sparse. Um, but yeah, you, you, if you just want a car to commute to and from work in, this would be fine. But, but again, if you're looking for a car to commute to work and back in, are you looking for something that's necessarily this much money? No. I, I, I'm... That's where I keep stopping, it's just how much it costs. And, and, and I think you've said it quite a few times, I quite like how we are, we are flying around this corner at the moment. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm illustrating the handling at this point. We're now doing 70 on the motorway, um, and it's quite bumpy. Yes. So carry on, Mark. Uh, you, you have, you've said it quite a few times, I think, Nikki, is that with smart cars, you pay more for less. Yeah, you do. Because there, there has to be a certain amount of, of design implications to making a car this small. You'd have to really like the smart car image, the smart car range, I think, to consider this. Because when you start comparing this to <coughs> Sorry. Uh, Leafs and iMeves, and secondhand Leafs and iMeves as well, which are much bigger, and you can get cheaper than this now, even the new uh, Gen 2 or Gen 1.5 Leaf uh, base model is <coughs> slightly cheaper yeah. than this. And that's got... And it's got the same level of tech. So I think if you wanted an electric car in the city, you wanted a small car that can get around corners, yeah. easy to park, it probably is a car for you. You need a bit of money to back that up, but it's, it, it's an option at least, I guess. And I suppose... That's where we're, we're heading towards with electric cars, is there are now specific cars for specific needs and specific reasons. And this has a very set niche, I think. It does. And that's part of the challenge. Yeah. And I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't be upset with this as my car. If, I, if, if this was my car, I, I could live with this as a car. I think my, my other half might have issues with the lack of space, but that's not a fault of I the think... car. Yeah, and that's the big problem I have with the car, Mark. You could live with it. Yes. Um, and, and I think, as you alluded to earlier, you don't live with a £17,000 investment. No, that's... You, you don't, you know, you live with, a, with an eight or a £10,000 car. You don't live with a £17,000 car. And I think, ultimately, there would be things about this car which would essentially bug me. I mean, I love this. Let's push that down because it's too bright for me. Yeah. Um... And that's really, you know, that's that's easy to do. You know, I can just I can just pull that over when I need to. But I mean, just listen. It's not great quality. No. It's quite clunky. And I think at the end of the day, I would probably get frustrated with it. I would probably get frustrated with the lack of, you know, um, capabilities. I haven't even tried to use a sat nav because it just looks so complicated. And the look of refinement, I guess that that squeaked as you moved it across. It, it's it's very nice on the surface, I, I feel. But we also had when we were doing our video earlier, and we reached up to adjust one of the the, the stalks. Pulse, yeah, that fell off. The front of it fell off, and and so it's very nice on the surface, and it looks very flash. But I, I worry that when you start scratching below that, you're, the engine overheating and reducing power on what. Maybe not a normal drive, but if you're no, showing was, off the I power was, of the car, I was I was intentionally trying to show the power of the car yeah. off. I, you know, that's not my usual driving style. But there, are, there are all these little bits you have to just be aware of with this car, and so it, it fits a specific purpose very well. And if you fall into that need or want, then maybe this would be the car for you as as a general EV 
for everyone? Maybe not. It's a nice, fun, funky little car. Without the 22 kilowatt charging, this car is pointless. With the 22 kilowatt charging, I don't believe anybody would want to drive this on a motorway for long periods of time because the seats aren't that comfortable. Yeah, it's quite. As you say, buffeting. There's a lot of buffeting on the. On and if the, you were going on holiday, where would you put your luggage? Exactly. Let's give it a uh, an out of ten rating mark. Out of ten, six. You're going to give it a six. Why? I think six because it is useful as as an EV. It is. It has its uses. Uh, and, and in very specific situations, it could be the perfect car for you. As a general EV, you could get by with it, but there are probably better options for you. Okay. I'm going to give it a six and a half. Oh, yeah. Why, why the extra half? That's all I want I'm going to give it a six and a half when it has the 22 kilowatt charger on board. Okay. And I'm going to give it five ah, when it doesn't. Yeah, that's clever. Because... Without the 22 kilowatt charger on board, this car is overpriced and yeah. underperforming. Not in terms of acceleration, but just in terms of, geez, why would anybody buy a car with a 3.3 kilowatt charger, which wasn't range extended? So to, in total, Mark, out of 20. Out of 20. Uh, so oh, you're making me do maths. What I did I know. say? I said six, you said six and a half. No, I said five and five to six. So and a half. 11 to 12 and a half out of 20. Yeah. Which is not great, really. Not great. Not the worst it could be, though. Uh, don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> but not great. Don't forget, if you're watching this for the first time, um, uh, we are feeling our way in this new show. Yeah. Um, and uh, this will be online on YouTube and will also be available at transportevolved.com. My name is Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. My name is Mark Chappley. And don't forget to plug in. Bye. Bye-bye.